Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Hope all is well, family. Grace and peace to each of you this morning. I'm going to invite you all to come on in. Welcome to Wednesday morning prayer. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad in it today. Why don't you come on in? I am looking forward to greeting some of you. We're going to get started in just a few moments here. Why don't you come on into the room this morning? I see you. I see you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you all come online, we invite you to share this stream. Go ahead and click that share button. Go ahead and create a watch party. Invite someone into this time of prayer. For this is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Hey, Monica. Hey, Freddie. Hey, Sherry. I see y'all. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Charmaine. Hey, brother Abraham. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Norfisha. Hey, Marva. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> hey, Mary. Hope all is well with everyone. Hey, Pat. Hey, AC, good to see y'all. Hey, Teresa. Y'all, we are live right now on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. We're live on all of our social media platforms. And we welcome you. We welcome you. As you come on in, why don't you drop just a quick word of welcome to everyone. We're on our prayer call line here as well. And we're going to get started in just about 30 seconds here. Hey, Barbara, good morning, good morning. How's everybody feeling this morning? All right. All right, we'll get... Well, friends, this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it. Good morning to each of you. Grace and peace from God who continues to love us each and every day. And we are so grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to come before the Lord uh, with prayer this morning. I want to welcome you to Wednesday morning prayer. We do this every Wednesday morning, have been doing this for years now. And God has continued to show God's self faithful. And so we certainly thank you for tuning in. So good to see so many of you all on. And I want to get right into the word this morning. We always begin our time together with a brief devotional. And then I want to say a word of prayer for you. As you come online, I want to invite you one more time to share the stream. Uh, if you can, create a watch party. And we would love to uh, invite so many others into this moment. Also, if you have prayer requests, please drop those into the chat. I find myself praying over you uh, each day and praying over these requests um, throughout the day as well. And so please drop those into the chat section if you have any prayer requests. And we're going to make sure uh, that we pray over those uh, today. Well, friends, obviously, um, yesterday was um, a major shift and a major breakthrough uh, in our pursuit of justice here in America uh, to see somewhat of a, of a different picture of America for a day. Um, wow, what a feeling. And to know that George Floyd's family can now begin this process, like I said last night when I went live, uh, to you know pick up the pieces and start to heal uh, from this extremely tragic event and, and truly traumatizing event. And I don't want us to overlook the trauma, the trauma associated with uh, the killing, not only of, of, of George Floyd, but, but death in general is tra traumatic. I want to name that this morning. Um, I also want to give you space to 
uh, express maybe if you if you're feeling any trauma from this because um, not only was the community feeling the trauma from this and truly you know the world but this man's family this beloved brother's family um, the trauma I think about his his daughter and how for her entire life she's going to have to to live with this and certainly her father uh, taken too soon. And so I, I pray for her this morning. I, I pray for that family. Um, I pray for that community who is who is still going, who is going to have to go through this again. You know, I, um, the situation even with Dante Wright and um, his 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 killing at the hands of a police officer. Um, you know, so what does it mean to have to relive this again? Um, on yesterday, I know that many of us breathed a collective sigh of relief because we have seen this narrative play out far too often. And we know perhaps what would have been the implications and repercussions had a not guilty verdict come down, especially after there is, you know, evidence there's, there's, you know, nine minutes and 29 seconds of uh, someone kneeling on the neck Every time I, I, I get that image in my mind, it's just, uh, it, it's so hard to even process. But for nine minutes and 29 seconds, uh, and seeing the life leave uh, his body is, is cruel and evil. Um, but on yesterday, uh, I know many of you uh, breathed the sigh of relief as I did. Um, I, was, I was waiting to process uh, and what it looked like to process those um, emotions of anger and uh, because I would have been angry. And I, I still am in a sense because this this is not over, right? And and we have to take this, this indignation that we have and turn it into like we have done, you know, fuel for change and our pursuit of justice must continue. Uh, but this morning, you know, as I reflect on on breath, as I reflect on life, as I reflect on hearing George Floyd say over and over and over and over again, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Um, I want to talk about this morning as everyone breathed a sigh of relief yesterday. I want to talk about what it means to start to breathe again what it means to start to breathe again. Um, for so long, black and brown people in this country, if we're just talking about issues of justice and equity, equality, um, have not been able to breathe. And I think this As we are thinking about breathing again, as we're thinking about what it means to breathe again, I want to tell you today that you can breathe again. We can start to feel what it means to breathe again. And through this process, uh-oh. If you're on the prayer call line, if you would bear with me one second. I think somebody said they lost me. Y'all let me know if I'm back. If I'm back, somebody give me a thumbs up. 
on social. I think my connection got cut. Okay. They say I'm back. Good. So breathing again. And you can breathe again. We will breathe again. And I want to give you some scriptures here um, because in this process, it feels like, you know, yes, the breath has been taken out of us. But yesterday we got a we got a glimpse. We got a glimpse of what it what it meant to just to just breathe again. And that feeling uh, of of breath. And there are two scriptures I want to raise for you this morning. The first is Genesis 2, 7. It says, then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. We breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And I want to want to juxtapose that reality with Job 33, 4, which says the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life. Do you see that? Do you see that it was God's intent when we were just clay, when we were just dust, when we felt empty, when we were empty, God breathed into us. And we began to live. He breathed the breath of life into humans and we began to live human. We were never meant to live void of breath, being able to breathe and being able to have this sense of of, of clear, you know, a, a clear passage to life through breath. Y'all breath is powerful. Breathing is powerful. So powerful is it um, that it can start a movement when someone can't breathe. And then when you think about Job, Job, a man who went through unimaginable pain, um, had loss, tragic loss, family, business, had personal suffering. Um, I think Job's life mirrors so many uh, lives in that you know, the unimaginable suffering of life is is often uh, the reality. And through it all, he says, the spirit of God, watch this, has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life. He said that there are moments that will take the life out of you, that will seemingly suck the breath out of you. He says, but because the spirit of God has made me, the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life. And I want someone to hear me say this this morning, that life has a way of taking the breath out of you that you can't breathe, that the George Floyd's, uh, the situation with George Floyd and, and Ahmaud Arbery and the killings of these, these unarmed black men and women and Sandra Bland and so many others and Breonna Taylor, these instances have a way of taking the breath out of you or seeking to take the breath out of you. And so does COVID and so does the loss of a loved one. And so does, you know, a, a child that you're trying to get back or so does, you know, a relationship that's gone bad. So there's so many things, sickness and illness. Life has a way, man, of taking the taking the breath out of you. Is there anybody that can just testify right there that life has a way of doing that? But God. But when life has a way of taking the breath out of you, I've come by to preach a word to someone this morning that God is the God that gives you life. And how do we keep on waking up every day? How do we keep on getting the energy and the courage to keep on going? It's because our God every day breathes life back into us. And what does that mean? What does it mean when God begins to breathe life back into us? What does it show us? What does it tell us? Number one, it tells us that God's presence is always with us. When God breathes into you, when God woke you up this morning just to be on this prayer call, it meant that God cared so much about you. It meant that God loved you so much and that God was not going to allow the circumstances of yesterday to take your life while you were sleeping. No, God says, I'm going to give you the breath of life one more time. I'm going to give you the breath of life today. I'm going to breathe into you so that you can get up 
and that you can go and face whatever you got to face. That you can go and do it again. That you can look the enemy in the eyes and say, well, look, whatever circumstances that you are going through and say, God breathed into me this morning. The, the mere fact that you woke up is an indication that God's with you. Here, here is what I want to say about this, um, about this trial and about this case. And that is, I, I believe, I believe in the omnipotent present hand of God in history, in circumstances. And I don't believe we get this justice without God being present. When you look at the situations around it, when you look at the people that showed up trying to advocate for George Floyd while he's being killed, when you look at the the over a year, how this has played out and then how it came together the end and how this brought people across the world together to protest an injustice, only God can do that. You mean to tell me that all that we saw was just a coincidence? No, I, I don't buy it. That's why as people of faith, we don't believe simply in coincidences. No, we believe in in God incidents. And that and I believe that God's hand was in this. Um, you know, God's with you when God breathes. Number two, um, when God breathes into you, it gives you it. Watch this. It renews your strength. It renews your strength. When you are weary and burdened with life because God, because God breathes into you, he renews your strength. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. We have these affirmations throughout scripture uh, that, that he will renew our strength. We'll mount up on wings like eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Let me show uh, what Charmaine says. Charmaine says, and we know that those who love God, all things work together for them. Yes, that, that all things have a way of working together for the good of them who love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purpose, that when God breathes into you, he gives you a renewed energy. And I'm speaking life into someone today because I'm gonna address this today. And I'm gonna we're gonna deal with this today because someone needs to hear that you are only making it because God is giving you the strength to endure it. Let me say that one more time. You are only making it because God is giving you the strength to endure it. And you're wondering how you make it. Everybody else is wondering how you're still making it. You are making it because God saw fit to breathe his breath into you this morning. And I pray that you don't take for granted that every day you wake up, you've got the breath of God flowing through you. And therefore you can do all things in Christ who gives you strength. Who in Christ who gives you strength. Doesn't that make sense? In Christ who gives you strength. And I believe that God's going to breathe life into you today to give you a strength to continue to persevere. And here's the final thing that, that when God breathes life into you, watch this. You have a testimony of how you've overcome. Is there, am I preaching to anybody this morning, just talking to you that you've got a testimony? Why don't you raise your hand? If you've got a testimony, you've got a testimony of how the Lord has breathed into you. When you stopped breathing, I'm not talking about literally or physically. I'm talking about stop breathing in your spirit. When you said, you know what? I'm done. I'm giving up. This thing is just too difficult. And God said, no, it may not be this, but I'm going to redirect you. And I'm going to give you a new energy and a new breath for something else that drives your passion. And as you're doing that, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to renew you such that you have a testimony coming out of this on the other side of it. Do you realize that you have a testimony attached to your life and you ought to just try to tell somebody. I don't know who you got to tell. If you got to go outside and talk to a tree, just go and tell somebody, tell something about how God has been so good. And, and, and you ought to look for opportunities to share with the world or whoever going to hear you, how good God has been to you. Y'all, this ain't about us. 
Seeking justice is not simply about something that we do. No, it is about when human efforts, when, when our personal efforts are then made realized by the grace and the power of God. And if you are watching this stream, I'm going to challenge you. If you have not spoken, spoken out on, you know, on, on, and, and claimed Black Lives Matter, you know, if you are, you know, in a position of, of authority and, and power and privilege, Y'all read between the lines, right? You know, um, and 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 you've not challenged, and particularly if you're a pastor, a preacher, or a person of faith, and you've not you've not challenged your friends, you know, on these issues of justice and why black lives, why all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You know, if if you have not challenged them, then I'm gonna challenge you to challenge them. <laughs> And maybe God's going to use you to breathe life, to breathe a life into them that they didn't know was even possible. God's breathing life into you right now. When you feel, when you, when you feel like you can breathe again, it is life giving and life altering. And today I'm telling you, that God's breathing life into you. He's giving you an energy. He's giving you a perspective. He's giving you a new opportunity today to do what you didn't do yesterday. So thank you, Brenda. Yeah, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, for your glory. And that's going to be my prayer for you. As you put your prayer request in the chat this morning, my prayer is that God would use you because he saw so much in you to breathe into you. He didn't just breathe on you. <laughs> he put the breath of life into you. And that means you've got another opportunity to do it again. I wanna encourage you with this prayer. Lord, we thank you now in the name of Jesus that you have breathed life into us. Lord, I thank you that you are the great I am. I thank you, Lord, that You've given us just in the last 24 hours a, a glimpse of what justice can look like. Lord, we know we have so far to go. Sometimes, Lord, it's daunting to even think about how far we have to go. But we realize that you're going to wake us up every day. You're going to breathe into us every day. You're going to give us what we need. You're going to give us the passion, the desire, the heart the mind, the spirit. You're going to give us the energy, the renewal, the, the renewed uh, perspective. You're going to give us all that we need for this season of life. And God, I pray that you would be all that we need in this season. Help us, O oh Lord, to realize that you're breathing right now. Lord, you're breathing into the father. You're breathing into the mother. You're breathing into the child. You're breathing, Lord, into the business owner. You're breathing right now into the doctors, into the nurses, into the teachers. You're breathing, Lord, right now into that entrepreneur who said, Lord, I feel like giving up because it's not working out the way, Lord, I thought it would. Lord, you're breathing into the pastor. You're breathing into the ministry leaders. You're breathing right now into the congregations. You're breathing right now, Lord, into your people, into the activists and those Lord, who are on the front lines and uh, Lord, those who are standing for truth and justice, you're breathing right now and you are breathing, Lord, into the person, Lord, that says, I don't need to pursue justice. I, this is not my issue. No, Lord, it may not be their issue, but it is their problem. And right now, Lord, breathe into them that they might have such a spirit conviction that they can't turn a blind eye, Lord, when black and brown people continue to suffer unimaginably in this country. Breathe into law enforcement, breathe into systems that oppress, Lord, so that we might have life, that our faith might be restored and renewed daily. Thank you, God, for breathing into us this morning. Thank you for this collective community, Lord, thousands of people around the world who continue to join in this Lord, community of faith of Cascade and Lord, through this prayer call, Lord, I'm, I'm so thankful. And I pray that it continues to bless so many people, God, because you said if you be lifted up and Lord, we're lifting you up, we're lifting high Jesus, Lord, not our own personal gain or our own personal Lord identities. No, we're, list we're lifting you up today and every day because you deserve it. And it's for your glory. 
So do it, Lord, and breathe into us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, it's always my joy to be with you. Uh, I'm so thankful for y'all. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. If you'll just take a moment, uh, I would be so grateful if you would share this stream uh, on your timeline, on your social media page so that someone else can be blessed through this prayer. Uh, y'all, I, I invite you to join us right back here on Sunday morning. Uh, we've been in the sermon series. I pray that you've been blessed by it. I'm going to pick back up there uh, by the by the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so we invite you to join us right back here on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Well, friends, I love you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you today. May you continue to live for God. May you love God. May you follow God and in all things continue to stay the course. Be blessed. Have a great day. Bye-bye.